to sit here starting to you two talk. Oh, wow, these are bright lights. No, you're all right. It's not my best side. What are you doing, video? Thanks so much for joining us. We have student athletes Brevin Easton, Brevin Easton, Reese Balkenbarter, and head coach Greg Pesuso. We also have our local media joining us in Albany. Um, coach, if you could, first, congratulations. Open Thank you. Uh, tough game. Idaho's a really good football team. I think the first half, they, you know, it was, you know, I give my applause to the Idaho fans. We're really good, and it was loud, and um, I think we struggled a little bit early in, on both sides, just communicating. Um, but we settled in and started to play pretty well before the half, and, you know, they missed a couple field goals, and that helped. But, uh, you know, I just have faith in these guys. They played their tails off. You know, we just kept banging away, banging away, banging away till we could – Get an opportunity to get the lead. We got the lead, and and we're able to hold on to it. So it was a it was a magical win for our program, and uh, first time in the Final Four is pretty sweet. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with our local media. Adam, we we'll start us. Adam, you on mute. Good question, Adam. Mark, you hop in. If not, questions here. Um, yeah, I mean, just good, great play call, and Brevin beat his man and um, had time to throw. So I trust Brevin, you know, with everything. So yeah, most definitely, it was definitely a pivotal moment and just a great overall play by me and Reese. <laughs> I cheered for you, <laughs> Mark. Uh, he was just open. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you've been watching us all year. Brevin, uh, I think I just destroyed the mic. Um, Brevin, he's always open. So is Jew, so is Roy, so is Deed, so is Levi. So it's really, you know, we have incompletions. I blame myself a lot because, you know, they're such good receivers and there's always a play to be made. So. Broke records today. So you have um, career passing touchdown record with 60. Yeah, what's up, Coach Fiaki? <laughs> and you have single season total offensive yards. So you broke two. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. Um, Congratulations. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> that's really cool. Um, you know, when you're so invested in your team, and, and just so, I was just so proud of the guys. You know, I was crying tears of joy after the game. And, um, you know, our whole team has that thought process, and, and that's the reason that. I don't think anybody on our team would know, you know, exactly, uh, you know, when they broke a record. We don't think about things like that. You know, it's really cool um, to be able to tell my kids one day, but it's cool. Um, uh, how many yards did he have? I don't. How much? Yeah, I think, you know, he, you know, we were felt like we were control the running game. I mean, some of the yards came at the end of the half when we were kind of playing coverage, but he's a good player. I mean, they have a good team. There's no question. This is, you know, you, you feel, you feel grateful to be in the final eight when everybody's got a pretty darn good football team and, and uh, he's good and the receivers were good and the quarterback's really good, you know, so, um, but I, you know, we, we didn't feel like, I don't know that he had any real big runs. We weren't really that concerned. We thought we handled him okay, you know, for what, we were a lot more worried about Giovanni and, and, and his, his skill set. It's a huge play and, and, you know, it's been the D line guy for forever. And, and um, the, we preach pressure, you know, we're, we want, obviously sacks are great. But we were hitting him and keep getting him off his spot. It, it, it affects a quarterback. It causes high throws. It throws early. So they did a good job rushing him. And, and they did a nice job chipping and trying to keep us off the quarterback. But eventually, you know, I talked to them on the sideline, both Anton and AJ, and I said, keep 
going after him. It's going to break loose. Just keep going after him because that's the mentality of a great pass rusher, and you saw it with Anton. I mean, he's got so many strip sacks this year. It's amazing, and, and really in critical moments in red zones and big things. So, you know, that's a great play by a great player, you know, and it uh, you know, came at the right time. I wasn't real happy about Elijah scooping that ball up, but, you know, we'd like to fall on that one. But other than that, I think it was uh, – yeah, it was a big play by Anton. We're going to go back to Albie quick. Question, Albie soon press. This one's for Coach. Um, I found last Thursday night against Virginia when the anthem was ready for a break and not being here, giving you a chance to run out of the pocket. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, you know, I, I, that's on me. You know, I, I, I need to walk in the huddle and say, don't score here. You know, I mean, that's, um, it would have been nice to kneel, and it would have been over there. But um, I, I mean, we had tons of confidence that we were going to get off the field there. Forty seconds is a, not a lot of time against our defense to score two scores. So we, you know, we still felt confident. But that one's on me. Yeah, I mean they got a they they had a, a very good you know secondary and, and, and pass defense, but um, I just thought we had a better passing offense. If that makes sense, so, you know. We uh, <clears throat> and not even to be disrespectful, you know they are great players. Number two is the best corner you know good. I've seen all year. Um, I definitely you know noted where he was at every single snap. Uh, didn't throw his way much except was he guarding you uh, on the the one? Yeah, so, I mean we got it one time, but. Um, He's an incredible player, but I, like I said, man, when you when you work with your receivers for months and months and months and months, and um, it's all you're worried about is finding ways for them to get open and and working on timing. Um, it doesn't really matter who it is. Uh, you know, old coaching saying to, uh, to quarterbacks is, you know, timing beats coverage, and I think uh, that happened a lot tonight. And you know, it's not like they were out of place. You know, they 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 they, they, they called a good game. Um, we just had answers for it, and, and we were able to execute. I, I think I think it's when you see really good players going after each other is is it's going to happen you know it's the same thing you know our pass rush we had one sack and they they did a good job on their end with that but it was it's it's good players going after each other and, and these guys we feel like we have a great passing attack we we don't go out and throw the ball all the time you know we don't we don't try to to lead the country in passing we try to win and i think that uh, tonight we needed him to step up in these receivers and they did it was it was a special really good job that throw down the sideline was and catch was pretty, pretty. Good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Pretty that. good job. <laughs> Coach, can you talk about the irony of winning here tonight and you're back here? Well, one, you know, we love Hell's Canyon. We stayed there, and um, we can't wait to come back and see everybody there. They treated us great. So, um, you know, they they were special. So we're already getting ready to book for, for <laughs> week three. But when I saw the seedings, I was shaking my head. I was like, what are the odds that we just got contracted to play Idaho and we're going out, you know? But... Look, you know, I know Coach talked a lot about it during the week. You know, he talked about us traveling across country, and and he he talked, you know, with the Eastern Standard Time and and all that stuff. It, it stuff doesn't matter to us. We're we, we're going to play the game. We these guys played at midnight already this year and flew to Hawaii. We 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 can take any challenge on. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was a great feeling to finally get the lead at the end of the game. But uh, I definitely got to give kudos to our offensive line because they definitely stepped up tonight. Coach, just building this, I mean, what's this, what's this process been like in getting out of the final four for the first time? What's it like for you? <laughs> um, it's just, you know, these guys, this all started last year with these guys. You know, we, we struggled. We came out and had a tough 21. It was a really, really brutal year on us, as, as, as it was on many, but really on our football program. And, and uh, I knew last year we had a good football team. We struggled. We lost, I think, five games or so by, by one by seven and then five and a couple three-point walk-offs. And, um, you know, it, we fought our tails off last year to try to win games. And, and um, you know, I knew we had something special with the kids we had. We added some people in the from you know that transferred in and, and uh, a couple freshmen and, and um, you know we you know we've got a great you know people talk about culture and and all those things they're they're so important but you know these guys live the culture it's a it's a, a real thing with them they care about each other and they you know that's 
it's the best explanation I can give you. You know, we were kind of down and out in this game. I think they were probably pretty comfortable coming out and feeling like we couldn't do much, but um, we kept fighting. It's a tribute to them. We're going to go back to Albany. Adam? You guys, uh, you guys mentioned it earlier, but, you know, with all the travel this, this team's had this season, now you, now you have a really quick turnaround to fly back and then, and then go on to, to South Dakota State on, on Friday night. Is this kind of thing where you, know, you guys are just used to it at this point? It, you know, we just, you know, we don't like to make excuses. I mean, it's it's something just like last year. We fought and clawed. We, you know, we're not gonna. The the flight was easy. I mean, I don't know if you ever drove from Albany to Maine before, but that's not an easy. Uh, that's not an easy trip, you know. And and uh, so we're we're we're. <laughs> it's a little shot of my AD back there, but uh, <laughs> no, we're we're just. We just go play. You know, this we were talking about. Maybe we should just drive to South Dakota from here and stay and. Just practice there Wednesday and Thursday. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, the kids have been resilient. They believe in each other, and uh, they believe in what the coaches are telling them. And you know that's special. Mark. Hey, Brevin, for you, the transfer, the transfer from Division Two, and how the team reached FCS Final Four with journey mean to you? Man. <clears throat> It definitely means everything to get to this point coming from uh, Division Two, and just a lot of different ups and downs going through in life and always just find a way to persevere. But I'm definitely most uh, happy for me and uh, my whole family, my football family and everybody on the team. We've been through a lot these last two years, three years going on, and to get to this point is just bittersweet. We're going to have two more. We'll start with Christian Albany, and we have one more for both of you today. Christian? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's really anything better, um, especially, you know, Idaho having uh, such a cool venue like this and taking a lot of pride in, in playing at home and winning at home. Um, and, you know, we just had the mentality that, you know, we're, we're the underdogs. You know, we've, I feel like no matter what, um, you know, we don't, we don't get the uh, kudos that we deserve, but we don't care. Uh, we just go out and fight every single, every single practice, every single game. You know, we don't care. We don't look at that stuff. And, you know, you go out and, and beat somebody, you know, the way uh, that we did, came back. And, you know, I think the past few weeks they've came back, you know, here and, <clears throat> and won, the, won the game, you know, walking it off or, or something late um, and, and just being able to, to show the maturity that our team, you know, has found. As Coach G was talking about last year, you know, Last year's team, we would have done every everything that we did in this game, except we would have found a way to give them the ball two more times and let them win. So um, that, that's the difference. You know, we know how close we, we can feel when we're going to win the game, and, and we're we're supposed to win the game. And um, we we do the right plays, we we make the right decisions um, to finish it out. So, you know, I, I would I'd like to say just one thing about these kids, which I think is lost in some of this, is it had been so easy to just not win the game get on the plane, everybody would have been thrilled with us, um, patting us on the back for a great year, but they didn't do that. It was it was uh, amazing what they did. It's special. Well, Mato, Coach, you mentioned it in the opening, but just talk about the opening and the Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a – you know, people say we have – it's the first time we ever won a game outside the Eastern – Time zones and and um, you know we we you know it's 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 for our program it's a big thing you know when we came out of you got to realize Coach Ford took this team from club football to Division three to Division two into FCS and then into the CAA in the first year and and then we've kind of picked the ball up it's a journey that this program's been on to um, you know to do well and I think. Uh, it, I knew it was going to take time. You just can't flip the switch. We don't have that kind of ability. We've, we've been building and building, and, um, uh, you know, to be here is amazing. You know, I, I, I can't wait to get, get with these guys and get back to practice, to be honest with you. I mean, that's the best time of the week, practicing. So. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate thank you guys. You guys.
Ready to go? Yeah, we'll <laughs> open up with, uh, with Coach have an opening statement, and then we'll, we'll go to the uh, you know, uh, hats off to Albany. You know, you know they got a very good football team, and um, you know I, I think our our team played their tails off, but so did they, and they, they made a few more plays than us uh, during the game. So so credit to them, and, and best of luck to them in the semifinals. Uh, you know, my message to the team was, you know, we shouldn't hang our heads. I, th- I think we uh, took another huge step, and you know our seniors who are who are moving on, uh, you know, they got a lot to be proud of. You know, for what we were able to accomplish over these past two years, and. Um, you know, going back to back, you know, playoff appearances for the first time since '94, '95, first playoff win since '93. So a lot of stuff that they can, you know, hold their head high of, and they're, they're always going to be vandals. And you know, for our guys coming back, it just tells us, uh, you know, we got to get to work. We got to have a great off season, and you know, the path from being, uh, you know, one of the top eight in the country to the actual number one team in the country is still a, a big gap. It might be as big of the gap from going. Um, you know, making the playoffs from being a team with a losing record. So, uh, you know, pr- proud of this team. Uh, you know, I, I thought we fought our tails off to the end. Uh, just got to improve and get better. Yeah, I, I thought the O line really competed. It's a shame, you know. N- n- number four, who I think is a great player, uh, you know, that was his only tackle of the game. He had one tackle, and it's a sack at the end of the game. Uh, but to hold that team to one sack, I think was uh, you know impressive for Anthony Woods to you know rush for 100 yards against that defense when I think their whole team was giving up about 75 a game and leading the country. Uh, a lot of good things. Now we, we didn't move the ball as well in the second half. We got to move the. We got to you know they made some adjustments. They started playing some new coverages to try to take away. We heard them a lot throwing the ball to the field, uh, and they started adjusting uh, in the second half. And you know, we got to do a better job of adjusting to their adjustments. Uh, uh, with things, but proud of the O line, the way they hung in there. It's just uh, that you know their, their guy made a play there late in the game. You know when we were not bad position uh, at that time, only down four. How would you overall kind of gauge how the offense played? It seemed like uh, settled in stretches, not, not as much. Uh, I, I, you know, I really like how we played in the first half. You know, I think we were averaging seven yards a play in the, in the first half. Um, you know, we, we finished with six point four, so that tells you we were probably you know five yards a play in the second half. But uh, you know, it's a defense that gives up about four and a half yards of play. Um, you know, we, we got to find a way. You know, I, I thought we, we settled for too many long field goals. You know, we, we missed three field goals, but they're long. You know, they're uh, 45 and 252s. You know, which are, you know, you, you can't count those as uh, points in your back pocket. We got to try to uh, get in there closer. They weren't, they weren't quite red zone opportunities, but we needed to be better, kind of in that fringe area outside the red zone to get in there and, and capitalize and uh, you know get some more touchdowns. So. Uh, you know, I, I, that's a really good defense, but, uh, you know, I thought we had opportunities uh, to score more. Uh, and we got to keep getting better going forward next season. As the season uh, comes to a close, what do you want these fans, these players, to remember most about this 2020 Well, you know, again, I, I think they should be proud of these seniors who are moving on just for what they did to help, uh, you know, get this program turned around in a, in a lot better shape. And, uh, you know, I thought our crowd was awesome again tonight, having over 9,000 people. And uh, I think we, our fans need to start training themselves for you know weekends in December, keeping those weekends free, because uh, plan on having a lot more uh, home playoff games in the Kibbe Dome over the next few years. And uh, you know, I think you should be proud of this team. I think it brought a lot of uh, pride uh, to this university and uh, a lot of great exposure. And you know, we got we got to keep uh, building. But I think they should be very very proud of these young men, these student athletes. I, you know, I think any season that ends, uh, especially you know, a good season where you're in the playoffs, is, is disappointing. But uh, you know, I, I told our guys we shouldn't be hanging our head. You know, it's uh, you know, it's obviously some finality for the guys who, uh, you know, who their eligibility is up. But um, you know, I don't think anybody should hang their head. We we had a lot to be proud of, and uh, you know, we we got a, a really good team was a few plays better than us. You know, we. Uh, we competed well, and you know that happens when you're in your competitive outings. And so, you, know, you always, you, know, you really, you really are sad more than anything because you'll get to spend another week with these guys. Would have been a lot of fun to spend another week with them. Yeah, I mean, it's something that, um, you know, it's inevitable as a as a college athlete. I think it's something that, you know, hits you, but it's something that I'm proud of. I'm proud to be able to say that I played five years of eligibility at the University of Idaho and um, 
you know, truly have found a, a second home outside of Phoenix, Arizona, where I grew up and lived my entire life. And so, you know, I came in to this university with 45 kids. There's six of us still here that stayed all five years. And, uh, you know, my twin brother being one of them. And so it's, it's sad, it's very sad, but it's, it's a, you know, it is an accomplishment because I set out to play college football and this was my dream and being able to live it and be a Vandal has been living my dream. Yeah, it was it was tough for me. I'm not gonna lie, it was a tough loss for me. But I just I don't know. I just wanted this to last as long as it could. You know, these these I just love this group of guys, and it was just it was, this season was fun playing with these guys. And I just never wanted it to end. So that was probably the hardest part for me. But love Hayden, love his coaching staff, man. I just just love being part, love being a Vandal. That's the biggest thing. Just love, just appreciated being a Vandal every day, and, and that's probably what hurt it the most. Like is knowing it's over. So yeah, love love being here. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I just trying to sink it in. Like, I couldn't, it was like, I don't know, I just trying to sink it all in. Just, just I just knew it was over when I was, it, just, it was hard to believe that it was over. That was probably the toughest thing, but, uh, you know, I just I, I want to keep playing football as long as possible, so that's something I can look forward to. But it's it's so it's just going to be a hard couple of weeks or a couple of months for me to get over this for sure. Yeah, and I think that's been a trend throughout the playoffs. I mean, that was a huge play, and uh, you know, he gave us some great energy on that on that first series. And yeah, that's just an example where we had really good uh, field position after the opening kickoff return, and we had to settle for a field goal, a long field goal, and we don't make it. Um, you know, his punt return, you know, gave us a lot of juice. He almost pulled the turkey. He got three three in a row, three strikes in a row. Uh, but, uh, no, he, he was a difference maker there. Um, you know, we were going to try to dial up a fake against him, but they kept going safe punt return, so we, we couldn't get a, a fake on him. Credit to them. They were, uh, you know, keeping their defense on the field. But, um, yeah, he, he's been a, a game breaker, a difference maker for us all year. Yeah, I mean, you know, Easton uh, really impressed me. Uh, you know, he, he he was tremendous, and uh, you know, I thought they did a good job of, of moving him around. So it wasn't wasn't uh, you know maybe if we would have played him again, you'd, you'd maybe say, hey, let's try to lock Marcus on him and put him on wherever he goes. But uh, they did a good job. One, one of his touchdowns, we had a we weren't on the same page in coverage, and that's the one he got really open at the end of the first half. Uh, that was a shame, but uh, you know Reese can really extend plays. I mean, he, he's excellent at moving in the pocket and extending plays. And I know at least one of their touchdowns came off of that, where he was able to escape the rush and uh, and get there. Um, you know, we got to him a couple times, had two sacks on him. But uh, you know, those guys are both great players. And uh, you know, hats off to, to Easton and Poffenberger. They they competed their tails off and made a lot of plays for them. Again, they made a, they made a couple more plays than we did. Well, you know, like I said, I, I know this senior class, I think uh, they're, they're going to be really successful no matter what avenue they go. You know, whether they're, um, you know, going to, you know, play football professionally like I think these guys are, or whether they're going to just take their the degree they got from the University of Idaho and go make a difference uh, in the world. And, you know, we're going to try to encourage and support those guys, whatever, you know, we have to do with, you know, letters of recommendation, you know, connections for job search, anything like that. And, you know, for our, our returning guys, you, you really want to remember this feeling. You know, you want to remember the feeling you had in your stomach after this game. And, you know, there might be some days in January and February where it's cold and snowy out and you got to get up early to lift. And, uh, you know, that that's why, because it's all the work you do in the off offseason uh, that, that no one sees really defines what happens in these, uh, you know, for this year, you know, 13 games we had that uh, the, the people see. So there's a lot of work that goes into that, and we got to really attack this off season with our guys coming back to improve as a program. Yeah, 
I probably shouldn't encourage some of those guys to go pro knowing that because uh, they had some they had some good player. I know Poffenberger's back, the quarterback. Uh, yeah, I mean that that happens, uh, you know, sometimes. So uh, you know, obviously we have other games before that on the road. We we got to get ready for, but that's that's a good football team. I, I told uh, Coach Gattuso that I, when we when we signed this game, they were three and eight. I didn't think they were very good. Now they now they got a heck of a football team and uh, you know won eleven games. So that's a good football team that comes in and. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll focus more on that later. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it.